EU side of things anyway for the Shanghai Regional Qualifiers. We got Team Liquid up against London Conspiracy. I'm Zambrella and I am joined by Skim. How are you? Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Team Liquid. Yeah, yeah, they are. I I followed them throughout the uh, open qualifiers, and uh, they didn't do so well in the first set, but in the second set, they were really strong, really good. Ooh. Radiant team. What do you think of the Earth Spirit band? So I actually haven't really been following Team Liquid at all. Do um, they have an Earth Spirit, Spirit player? Yes, Jerax, Jerax. is probably yeah. the most famous, I guess, Earth Spirit player. Um, he's been uh, he became famous because of like he spent it in pubs, right? And yeah, yeah. they're one of the teams to most consistently pick Earth Spirit right now, mostly because he can just utilize the hero so well. Um, the hero was actually banned in the recent patch. Um, a quite significantly banned, uh, uh, nerfed actually, remaining. but Jarek still. still makes him work. I've seen a couple of other teams during the open calls as well. That was, uh, it's kind of scary when <laughs> there's a good, uh, uh, spirit player. Yeah, it, 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 exactly. It's one of those heroes where you kind of have to fear him because if there is a strong player, it's a very strong weapon. But it's also very difficult to see if the opponent, especially in an open qualifier, obviously, if there is an opponent capable of playing the Earth Spirit. So in open qualifiers, you usually see this hero go through. Uh, even in, comp in most competitive matches, you don't see an Earth Spirit ban. But against Liquid, it is definitely a good ban to have. Five yep. Seconds I've seen LC do this. They actually they pick the Gyrocopter first because Jalopy yeah, is he's yeah. pretty proficient on the Gyrocopter. Team Liquids turn to pick. But, uh, yeah. I, it has its pitfalls because obviously you've, you've picked a carry straight away. Crazy. And it kind of opens, tells the te Radiant other team what team you're going to be picking. As one of his heroes, yeah, you can counter pick him, but he's still going to do well, sort of. Especially, it kind of depends on how you build around him, how much you focus on the Gyrocopter, if he is like a solo carry or not, and how you can sort of like utilize him and what kind of strategy you want to build, if it's more late game orientated or if it's really early aggression kind of orientated um, strategy. And I think for a team like London Conspiracy, I mean, they're sort of new in a sense that I believe they've only been playing together for roughly a month or two, I think. So, in that regard, I think it's actually really important for such a team to nail down one strategy and certain heroes that they just focus on and say, hey, we're just going to keep on playing with these because this is what we know. And, I mean, it seems to work out for them so far, right? Yeah. Ten seconds remaining. Well, they got through to the regionals. <laughs> Five seconds remaining. They pick up a Beastmaster, which I find very interesting. Mostly because hey, I've... not. Sorry, yeah, I said, no, I've sure, seen him played lots now. Yeah, um, it, it does get back. it does get played more and more, but also because Team Liquid actually also plays Beastmaster a lot, so maybe it's also sort of sort of like counter pick in there. Ten seconds remaining. Yes. What do you, what are your thoughts on uh, the carry venge? Like I've seen it picked up a lot more, and I'm still not sure it's that good. It is pretty good, I think. It has its weaknesses for sure, um, but I think it's very good. It, it you can't really pull it off all the time, though. You definitely need to draft around it to make sure that all of the weaknesses, for example, the fact that she's very squishy. Um, you kind of need to drop around that, but it's it's a niche pick for now. It's not something that you're gonna see every day or every every week, but it can definitely work still. It's just yes. so strong being able to swap somebody out of position. The fact that you have uh, well, that is one of the things. But I think that's actually for me one of the bigger upsides to having a carry bench. The fact that you have like an early level two swap, which you don't have if it's a support bench. So that's pretty strong, but yes, yeah. I'm, I'm glad Bane's banned out. I've been seeing it so much. This is like... 
Bane. Oh, for sure. It's a, it's a very <laughs> annoying hero to play against. Very strong, though, so you can understand why. Ah, oh, the Oracle ban as well. Straight with the Dark Seer pickup. Uh, Not surprised to see this. I think Liquid learned their lesson from earlier today, where they picked up a Dark Seer and then let the Oracle through, because Oracle is the best counter against Dark Seer early on. Uh, you yes, can purchase you purge. can purchase the iron shell exactly, and uh, that's it's so not fun to play against that. So, I actually think Oracle, even like if you forget about the fact that it's a really good counter to Dark, I think it's a really good hero anyway. I think it's hit the teams and players have learned to play with it and around it a lot more. It it becomes it's become really strong. Yeah, but I, I'm not sure if Reserve if you dis if you discount the docs here. I don't think the Oracle ban is that warranted right now in this lineup, mostly because I don't think it's necessarily that good against Tusk or Razor. Um, it's not bad or anything, but I think it's also not too strong. But yeah, of of course, Oracle is definitely a potent hero right now, and you can definitely see more and more here more and more teams and players being. Uh, adapting to the hero and what the hero can provide. So, uh, London Conspiracy, with the Gyrocopter and the Beastmaster pick up now, what are we thinking? I'm thinking there's probably going to be some more quite push oriented lineup here. Gyro is pretty good at pushing. Beastmaster gets the Necro Book, so obviously that helps with the push. Yeah, you could, you could go for something. What's that benefit those pushes? Maybe. Shaman. Probably good against the Darks as well, because as soon as he goes for the Surge, you just shackle him. And now oh, there we go. Shadow Shaman picked up. And even outside of the, his pushing capabilities, he's still strong against Darks here and Razor because of his disable. So it's a very solid pickup. Pick. But it's also a good counter from Team Liquid now with the Undying. How come? Um, the tombstone is good against pushes, being able to sort of... I guess you put it behind the tower, it's yeah. hard to reach, and then there's all these zombies I, I, in the way. I, I will say that Gyrocopter is also good against Undying, but still, Undying is still a good hero here. And Undying Tusk is a very fearsome dual lane, actually. This is something that I talked about with Shiver in the last game, is that Shadow Shaman in the lane, you can exploit it, sort of, because he's very, he, he can be very weak in the lane, actually, depending on what partner he has. So if you have Tusk and Undying rolling in a snowball towards Shadow Shaman, he's dead. Yeah, he's what, low HP, doesn't have much move speed either, I believe. Yeah. And his disabled's also... I mean, one for one, he has to stand still, and the other has a, has a significant cast time, in my opinion. So it is something that remaining. Team Liquid could technically explo exploit, especially with the Docs here as well. It's Five like, that could technically nice. be a really strong try lane. What do you think? This Queen of Pain, though, probably, I guess it'll be matched up against a Razor. I find it kind of strange that London Conspiracy actually decide to pick up the Queen of Pain. But with Razor's uh, unstable current. Ah, oh, that's okay. Queen of Pain against Razor is actually an okay matchup with the Queen of Pain. Yeah, with the unstable current, you're gonna you're gonna be slowed, slowed a bit, or I guess purged. Radiant or team whatever. Um, but I will say that she does fairly well against him. It's it's an okay matchup to have for sure. Ten Visage Ben. Remaining. I'm not sure if one of LC's players plays Visage Five significantly, but remaining. that's a good ban actually. It's a lot of damage. Okay, and the Sven with the dark here can be very potent. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing like particularly surprising about either of these drafts to me. No, not really. I was... <laughs> I actually thought about Ember Spirit, but in my head I was like, well, against Beastmaster and Shadow Shaman, that's very risky. Uh, in general, against pushes, Ember Spirit is really strong, but... They have a lot of disable against him right now, so I'm not sure if this is the best pickup right now, but it is a comf comfort pick from a Tumba Man, so I think this weighs in more. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm just pretty good. And with the darks here as well. The combo there. Remaining. Blood of Fist, Vacuum. Yeah. And if you're an Ion remaining. Shell plus Flame Guard, if you're running after someone, that's like 120 magic damage so, every second or something. If not more. <laughs> so I'll see. The question is, do they, do they run... 
I, I think uh, I don't think they will. Kefka no, I don't is... think. Yeah. But... Yeah, Kefka's pretty good at it. London Conspiracy. So they've got 20 seconds now to decide on their last hero. Probably a support hero we're looking at. I think we want a, a strong sort of position 5. Well, Shadow and Shaman remain. to get that ether lens, the blink or whatever he wants, the ags. They don't have long to decide. Omni-Knight. They're going to go with the Omni Knight. Wow. I haven't seen this hero for a while. Yeah, me neither. That's it's actually a solid pickup though against you can you can purge off the sleight of fist with the repel. Yes, the heal is pretty nice. Um, Team Liquid doesn't have too much burst. They do have the tusk, obviously, but yeah, Omni Knight is actually not that bad of a hero. Sleight of fist obviously is also useless against GA, so sure, why not? This could work out. Uh, and also, the gyrocopter is okay at rotating into the jungle, so he could always, uh, you know, free up the lane for that Omni Knight to get some levels or the Shadow Shaman, either one. I like pretty well. We're just waiting for the players to load in now. So we've got London Conspiracy Dota 2 with their sort of what looks like a fairly pushy lineup against Team Liquid's Wombo combo. Well, it's not the biggest Wombo combo, but really definitely a team fight oriented lineup for it's sure. It's also the most, is probably one of the most liquid lineup they could have picked. I say that because almost every one of these is amongst their signature heroes. Um, they just basically pick their comfort heroes, and they happen to work together, I guess. Okay. I, I have technical issue. I'm going to have to quit Dota. I can't click on the mini-map to move the mouse. Oh. <laughs> okay, Did I'm going to wait until the first, until the timer goes, though. Sure. Did, did you click on the camera in, inside the lobby? No. Oh. I know that screw things over. I click on heroes. I can click on heroes. Uh, it's all good. Anyway. Smoke. Oh, they're going to find a kill here. Oh, five heroes smoked up from Liquid, like you said. Looking to move around. They can get a wrap around and get a kill, but he's... Uh, oh, no, I think Omni Knight's in a lot of trouble. There's the Snowball catching at least three heroes. But he does get the repel on himself, so he's not going to get stunned up, and he runs towards that T1 tower of his. And looks like he's actually going to get out from there. Very quick fingers to level up that repel. Yeah, out of all the heroes they could have found, this is the only hero they couldn't kill, I think. Maybe the Queen of Pain, because she has Blink, obviously, but... Yeah, yeah. very unfortunate. So after that first little uh, rumble in the jungle, we're gonna get the lanes on the go as the timer goes. Uh, Raze is gonna pick up the 100-100 rune for himself, and over... I oh, actually can't see it. It's Queen of Pain that gets the bounty, and I'm gonna very quickly disconnect... Sure, I'll give you a radio cast. So, significant things to point out is that the Shadow Shaman has boots early on, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of sort of rotations coming out to the mid lane. Right now we have a bit of warding going on. Beastmaster blocked one camp in the safe lane to prevent the double pull. And so far, pretty just very stale. Double Iron Shell for mind control right now. Triple Iron Shell now. And with this, he's going to push up the lane quite nicely. But he has to be careful. Rapperon is going to come. Solon. Denied. Was that block enough? Yep, the shackle is in range. Rocket Barrage is there as well. Mind Control should probably fall. He eats a tree. It's not going to be enough. He tries to juke himself. Nope. And he even wasted a self, I believe. Yeah, that's a big deal. I'm back in now. I just caught the tail end of that first blood. So, and, and everything's working. Hooray! Nice. Excellent. So we're going to have Queen of Pain up against the Razor in the mid lane. Oh no, Omni Knight's got to be careful. The Iron Shell doing some damage there, but Joppy's there. Radiance bottom Force back that Darks here. We're actually seeing standard tri lanes. I'm so used to seeing these like aggro dual lanes or aggro tri lanes these days. And we've got a standard min matchup as well. No supports helping out the mid laner from the beginning. Um, it's, it's definitely a refreshing change of pace to not <laughs> see like tri lane versus tri lane in the mid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's always good fun. And now every time Razor tries to get that static link on, Queen of Pain is just like, nope, and blinks all the way back to her tower. I think it's the right thing to do. What's on Dying doing here now? We were talking about, oh, okay, standard. It's going to be the battle for the Druns. Yeah. Bottom room, we do see uh, Darkseer. He's facing up against two supports here. He's going to get shackled up. 
The bounty rune is stolen by Omni Knight, and now the supports are going to run away. Less action on the top lane, Undying is going to pick up the regen rune. Uh, mid lane is very stale in regards to, or very equal in regards to last sets. It's to be expected, really. I don't think this is too much in favor of one player. If anything, I think maybe maybe the Razor, mostly because he can force out the blink all the time, and it does hurt the mana from, from the Queen of Pain, who still doesn't have the bottle. But as soon as the bottle comes, I don't think it's going to be an issue, really. Yeah, I, I can see this laning stage being uh, a lot more static than we're used to. So, I have to keep our eyes out for any interesting movements. Got a nice pull coming out from the Shadow Shaman now. So, that's going to bring the Creep Wave back towards the Radiant Safe Lane Tower. Oh, Darkseer, he's taken up so much of that rocket barrage. Radiant Courier has been killed. Wait. Oh, the Radiant Courier died. Where did he die? I don't know. I was in the mid lane. It looked like uh, some Miss Micro coming out from the Queen of Pain, and Razor just walked up to it. It was yeah. literally right. It was right here. Wow, that's actually huge. I will the say that it could have been much worse because my baby knight did get his bottle, but still. Yeah, this that's gonna be pretty tilting. But guys, are professionals, <laughs> well, they've uh, learned to deal with stuff like that. Also, really nice gold boost. I mean, Fata does have boots and bottle right now, so he's definitely ahead. Yeah, I think, I think Razor, if he does want to get a kill on this Queen of Pain, he's gonna have to somehow force out the blink and then go on her when that's when the blink's down on off cooldown. Thing is, though, the way Razor, uh, Fata places Razor is not necessarily that aggressively. He doesn't necessarily need the kill. Sure, it's nicer, uh, nice to have the kill, um, especially. I mean. Jerex is co potentially coming in to find one, but just win his lane in regards to CS and then transition into basically into a carry, I suppose, just by farming up a lot. Oh, he's gonna try and force the blink out the Queen of Pain. He salves up, and he's had the she's had the rune secured for herself by those two supports. Oh, the Sentry's just out of range of the Observer Ward. That's very unfortunate. You don't really see that Observer Ward on the Radiant Hill side too often from the Radiant side themselves. That ward usually is placed by the Dire, so... Very unfortunate. And Jerex tries to go for a gank here, but it's gonna be a futile attempt because she has vision. Beastmaster actually blocked up the pool camp. Which I find... Uh... Actually, no, it's the Dire side that blocked up their own pool camp. I quite like this actually, it stops the Beastmaster being able to pull the creep wave. Uh, well, he initially blocked it himself. Did he? Oh, okay. Right. Uh, they they de-warded the, his ward with, with this. But yeah, obviously at the same time they also blocked this camp, so uh, he can't pull through. Um, what's Darkseid doing? He's gonna, gonna stack? No, he's not gonna stack. Doesn't have any camps to take. No, nope, nothing happening there. He has, he has to fall back into the jungle at this point. Um, he's not getting too much out of the bottom lane. Your axe and... is looking for the wraparound on the top lane. Nah, he doesn't have any vision though. Nah. He needs... I don't think they can do this. It's yeah. going to be very tricky. And Beastmaster is sitting very far back. For good reason, as Tusk does eventually show up. Tower is under attack. So in regards to the laning stage overall, Liquid is definitely, definitely winning, just because Fada is winning his lane quite significantly now, by the way. Radiance middle tower is under attack. He's almost doubling Quop in terms of last hits. Radiance top tower is under oh. attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah. Oh, he gets shackled up though now, and the DD taken by the Queen of Pain is going to throw out the right click. It's got the Sonic Wave, actually no mana for it, but no need. Four heroes rotating in for that. Pull down now, Mind Control got to run himself away, but he is going to get slowed up. The, obviously the Surge does help, but Jalopy is pretty fast, but the TP support coming in. Jalopy in so much issues here. Well, so many issues here. Oh dear. Uh... Oh, oh. Oh no, I've lost my co-caster. Ugh, oh, this is all going so badly. Internet dying. Skype can crash. Oh, did that hurt? Oh, 
Hooray. Hello? Sorry. Skype crashed. Oh, Excellent. Classic. And now the stream seems to be laggy and I don't have any idea why. It was working fine throughout the entire day. But of course it's gonna happen now, isn't it? Anyway, I'll just cast. Continue as possible. Shadow Shaman gonna get caught out by that snowball. Very squishy hero. And we're gonna see Jarex get that. Pull down though from Gyrocopter. He's deciding to go and focus the tombstone, which is the right thing. It's a good rotation coming out from from Liquid. Uh, yeah, sure, they only found the Shadow Shaman, but it's still a good kill to get. Most Mostly because this Tusk hasn't really accomplished too much in the early game. Ooh, Baby Knight with the Rube. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. I'm not really sure who this, who the, uh, it looks like actually Liquid are coming out on top. Just a little bit. Uh, they are one kill behind, but Ember Spirit's got more CS than the Gyro. And like you said, Fatter is uh, well ahead of that Queen of Pain in terms of CNET, CS. Uh, and if you look at the net worth, Doxia is also only marginally behind the Beastmaster. And in regards to levels, yeah, he's a full level behind, but you know, as a Doxia, that doesn't really matter too much. Uh, he can catch up quite nicely later on, so... This is definitely okay for Liquid right now. Like, they're totally fine with how the laning stage went, I think. I like the way they, that they rotated the Undying downstairs, uh, down here as well. Because they apply a lot more pressure this way. As you can see, the Gyrocopter was forced back into the jungle. Which isn't too bad for him. Oh, top lane. Ah, uh, the Shackle. Ember Spirit, he's got a remnant, he's gonna get out! It looks like he is for now. He is slowed down by the ball, but bottling himself up. Oh, that was a close call. It really was. And I suppose this is, I guess, a bit of the weakness from LC's draft, because Omni Knight is not necessarily the best ganker. If this had been any other hero, I'm pretty sure there would have been a kill. Um, but yeah, it was a good attempt regardless, though. Yeah. At least forces him out. Bottom lane, they want to. Yeah, this this is yeah, that snowball. Shaman. He is like food right now, and even though TP support is coming in, Jalopy plus two others. Queen of Pain doesn't have the Sonic Wave, but they're just going to TP out. And they don't have any stuns. Nothing to stop them TPing out. Again, this is part of the weakness of their draft. They only have two disables, or I guess I suppose three on two heroes, and they forced out two TPs. Meaning that Fata can just freely hit onto this tier 1 tower mid. Oh, by the way, can you tell people in Dota TV that they need to reconnect? Because I reconnected and it's a it's a bug in Dota. Uh, what do you mean? P -p apparently people can't hear me in Dota oh, TV. Oh, okay. So okay. can you let them know oh, yeah, that sure. they need to reconnect? People in Dota TV, reconnect to the game if you want to hear us. Oh, if you wanna... Well, hear, hear, hear me. <laughs> here's, here's, here's Umbrella, yeah. God damn it, Dota and all of its bugs. Yeah, it... Annoying. Looks like they're gonna wrap around for Kefka. That should be a kill. They have enough damage. He doesn't even have raw either, so he's gonna raid the triple remnant going forward. Even the tombstone co co uh, committed. Jalopy now trying to get the kills. If he can, Kuroki, he's very low getting take the tower hits. He's gonna get go down to a straight flat cannon hit, it seems. And now Tusk caught out, hexed up. Is there the shackles? There is. Jorpy just gonna throw in the right clicks. And in comes Baby Knight. And it is Shadow Shaman when he gets that last hit. I like this from LC, the way they're responding to these ganks. Um, um, I think if you're Liquid, I'm not sure you actually expected all of these TPs coming in. Because they literally, uh, almost literally just TP'd bottom, right? So, I think this yeah. maybe caught them off guard a bit. What's playing as Jalopy. Long as the doesn't die? Oh. Look at this fight going on. Who's going to win this? Jalopy? He's gone too aggressive. Ooh, big mistake coming out there. Very big that's mistake. The, that's the travels for Matumba Man. And he's, yeah, he's even going the greedy build because why not? I mean, he's had a fantastic start. Hasn't been contested really, or marginally contested, I suppose. Gotten a kill. Good work. Uh, looks like Queen of Pain 
With the Rose Robe and the Magi, I'm guessing it's going to be an Orchid. Yeah. There's no real reason to... Well, actually, it could be... Could it be a... Nah, nah. Nah, it has to be. Actually, no. Yeah, right. The new Veil is built up this way. Well, I say new. I think it has been like this for a while. Might go for a Veil. But it also could be an Orchid. Orchid is obviously good against Ember Spirit. Yes. I still feel I think Ember Spirit is going to have to go uh, Lincoln's at some point in this game. Oh yeah, for and sure. That, unless he stays super fired and he's going to run into the Shadow Shaman. The poor Shadow Shaman that seems to be getting caught out so much. And here's the Iron Shell Flame Guard I was talking about. It just melts anyone that gets too close. Look at Jalopy, it's just going to take so much damage. Committing the cooldown, but I think he's dead as well. The Remnant Forge just for the extra bit of new damage. But the Sonic Wave, they're running through three people. So they do get the return kill on that Ember Spirit because of the pure damage Sonic Wave coming through. Beastmaster, he might go for the raw if he has any backup on his team, but so do the Dire, all four of them here, in fact. Oh, do they go for the Queen of Pain, maybe even? Oh, do they can go for They do commit the Tombstone. They need to focus the Tombstone Snowball coming through. And the wards get put down by Biver. These are actually going to do some significant work here. The wall put down. <laughs> Everyone on the uh, liquid side is pretty low at the moment, but they can continue chasing Queen of Pain, surviving just a long-range plasma field. That's still a good exchange. Trading the Tusk for the Beastmaster is perfectly fine if you're liquid. Um, also quite interesting, the fact that Matuma Man didn't get the kill on the Gyrocopter meant that Queen of Pain couldn't get any streak. So... The way that the fact that Matuma men died down there uh, down there wasn't actually too bad, or rather, it could have been much worse. But just as I note, yeah, good point. Hi, Matuma men is back up to nine hundred gold again. Probably gonna go into Yasha, and then you don't necessarily have to go straight. Actually, well, yeah, obviously you could go for Battle Fury now, but. Could also go for Yasha. I've seen that a very greedy build uh, bots Yasha on basically the the Phantom Lancer build, mm -hmm. but it's most likely going to be a battle here. Radiant's top tower is under Freeze is going for the S and Y. It looks like. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, it's a standard build. Um, usually he builds Yasha first though, but just because of the Queen of Pain, he definitely needed attack. Assange first. He needs more HP to survive. Um, the combo. And also the gyrocopter, obviously. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Looks like the Dire is gonna secure the top tower? Radiant yeah, Radiant is not gonna contest this at all. They're not nah, even pushing. This is surprising. Yeah. Radiant's top tower has fallen. And it is and it is an orchid for the Queen of Pain. She has the Oblivion staff now. I would have been surprised if it had been a veil because you don't really see veil on a Queen of Pain too often. No, especially as she's got pure damage now as well. So much point. Uh, so wards are committed in this bottom lane now, actually. Tower taking a lot of damage and probably will fall. Maybe looking for the deny? Nah, it's not going to work. Didn't secure that. And now Ember Spirit moving very aggressive up to the T2 as these TP supports come in. Just trying to make sure that they can get this tower uncontested. So tower for tower, but obviously mid tower, much, much uh, higher value. Yeah, in regards, to, in regards to map control, this is much better for Liquid now. Um, especially because Matuma Man is playing so aggressively. Taking away this tower gives them much more room to play around with. You can see already Jerex is positioning himself so aggressively. Yeah. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. A very easy kill for them. But they... <laughs> it looks like they are looking for more. Even though I feel like they probably shouldn't just because Jerex is so low. Radiance bottom and they don't have the mech on mind control yet. If they have the mech on mind control, they can play much more aggressive than this. Maybe done, though. Yeah. 100 gold, roughly. And as you can see already, this is this is what uh, Liquid likes to do a lot when they have Ra uh, Fata on the Razor. 
Fata becomes actually a carry more so, uh, more of a carry. He falls back, he farms more, whereas Matoma Man becomes a sort of like mid hero where he's playing much more aggressively. Only has boots of travel, but he's still playing so aggressively with his Ember Spirit. He's actually not too far from Battle Fury now, if that's what he does go for. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Bottom Broadsword and the Claymore in one go. Now it's just a perseverance. Top lane looks like LC wants to take this tier 1. I believe Liquid Dyer's shouldn't con contest this, mostly because they are at the tier 2 bottom already. I mean, if they can trade T1 for tier 2, it's uh, yeah. an obvious win for Liquid. For sure. Although, fortification does come out and the defensive TPs are already being sent this bottom lane. They don't want to lose this, but the tombstone is put down. This push is happening, whether they like it or not. The cooldown as well, but Gyrocopter, he's caught in his own. The slider fist chains coming in, and now they're going in one by one. I'm not sure this is the right idea. Guardian Angel doesn't have the mana. The Sonic Wave does come through with the roar. Maybe they are going to be able to turn this around. Darkseer caught off in the sidelines. As very soon, a quickly Omni Knight does have mana for that Guardian Angel, and it is a Darkseer going down, but still three heroes. And now Kuroki, he's just running after the Beastmaster with this Ion Shell. The right clicks come out, he still will Four, but a four for two trade off in the end. Yeah, you correctly pointed uh, out you do not want to TP in one by one. It's, it's basically a beginner's mistake the fact that they stacked the TPs onto one tower so much, especially the moment they saw that Liquid wanted to fight and they were in a really good position to fight. As you pointed out, the tombstone was dropped already. They The, the way they placed the TPs made it really easy for mind control just to place a, a wall there. So. Definitely a mistake from LC. I will say though that the saving grace is the fact that Baby Knight got a double kill, I believe. So this is at least something going their way. Yeah, so now we're getting nearly 20 minutes in and Liquid uh, have an over a 5k team net worth lead and about 5k XP lead as well. Uh, so substantial. I, I don't feel like it's kind of those crazy 10k leads, but. It's kind of the point where Alsi's like, okay, we've got to maybe change the game plan a little bit. It's it's not working out if we let things go continue. I will say though, are. I will say though that even even though it might just be five to six k lead in terms of net worth, they are definitely ahead even more, purely by map control. They took out the tier two bottom, which basically denies LC a lot of access to their own jungle. As you can see, they don't even have a defensive ward for their own jungle, so farming there is going to be really difficult for the Gyrocopter. I think we might see Liquid go for Roshan attempt very shortly. Yeah, they have the Sanjin Yasha now on, on uh, Razor. It could be a good timing, but... Th the thing is, and I suppose this is maybe why they're not doing it, is because they don't necessarily have the best Roshan lineup. Yeah, they have a Medallion on the Undying, but it's not really... I don't think it's too enough yet. All right, as action is going to take place in this bottom lane, they punch up the Ivory into the air. He's trying to get his, but he actually gets the shackles out. The cooldown and the Sonic Wave comes through three people. It's going to be a retreat from Liquid, it looks like, but there is still the Tombstone and the vacuum wall onto three heroes. They're actually going to turn this around, but Tumor Man could go for the side of Fist. We do see Kefla come in the sideline, get a roar onto that, uh, <clears throat> onto the Tusk, but on the sidelines, Ember Spirit close to the T2 tower, and gets, it, gets a double kill there. I just want to yeah. point out that Fata hasn't even been involved in these last two team fights. Fata <laughs> has just literally pushing. just been farming on the jungle, in the jungle, in the safe lane. Um, even, even, even if they had gotten the Dark Seer right now, this is so good for Liquid. This is so, so good for Liquid because Matuma Man doesn't die. He gets those kills. He he bought his Battle Radiance Fury right before the team fight attack. and is sitting at two K gold again. Uh. This is so painful for LC. They're about to lose their top. Well, they could lose, well lose their top tower here. Do see the Omni Knight, but it is just an Omni Knight. It's just level an seven. Omni Knight. Looks like they're not going to be able to quite get the tower. Possibly uh, a deny. They can deny it, yeah. And Fata basically has his BKB. He just needs the recipe. Is really Radiant close to it. Has been and Liquid is just outplaying them really hard. The fact that they're winning team fights 4v5, the fact that they're utilizing the map much more efficiently, and the fact that they basically denied LC any attempt of map control by, you know, just 
the, the moment LC tried to push at the bottom lane, Liquid took a fight to them and wiped them. So this is this is the kind of game that is LC uh, that LC is right in right now. They have to they have to find something here. And they smoked yeah. up for the tier one, which yeah they're gonna get, but they're gonna give away Roshan for it. I say you can get this quickly and have the foresight to move down to the Roshan area. But they've committed the wards, so it's it's gonna be a very tricky fight for them to win if they do commit it. And yeah, it's gonna go down for free. They put down the tombstone just to make sure. Radiant might realize now, but there's nothing they can do. There we go. And that's Ember Spirit picking up the ages. I think it's one, one, it's a Ember Spirit's really hard to pick off in the first place. And if you do manage it, doing it a second time is hard, but he's also got a kill streak and it's worth quite a lot of money. And he's also going the greedy build. You could argue, uh, you, you mentioned it before, he, he probably needs a link in this game. I totally agree, especially because the Queen of Pain has the Orchid. A link could actually be really good this game, but. Honestly, LC hasn't given him a reason yet to really think about the Lincolns twice. No, like you said, the mini crit. Possibly going to be a big crit soon. This last outer tower could be in jeopardy. It's a wrap around. Beastmaster, got to be careful here. Just throw down those uh, Necro 3 warrior archers, but whatever. He's dead, and now he's just going to feed at least one of them away. And with this, they can just take the tier 2. There's no buyback on the Beastmaster, so LC can contest this. They definitely need the roar if they want to fight. Um, I believe with the next with the next with the next creep wave they're just gonna push in. Be pretty easy, especially no Beastmaster to worry about. And Tusk and Undying, they're looking around to go around the sidelines. They actually can't quite be seen. They are now as they reveal themselves. Tombstone goes down. This could be a terrible fight. LC losing two already. With the, uh, the Matumba Man, Slight of Fist, and now he's going after Jalopy. This might be a bit far to go past the T4s. They're just going to settle for uh, going past the T3s. And they should get this mid tower as well. Uh, straight, as, straight at the same time, Matumba Man Radiant picks up his Blink Dagger, and so does Jurex. I think they're both on the Courier. I believe everybody has been in this kind of game where the enemy can just dive your tier 3, get out without really any collateral damage, and then still take your tier 2. That time, Sonic Wave Ooh, doesn't quite get dodged there, but the BKB from John trying to keep himself alive there. The raw onto Matumba Man, they get his first life down, and they also managed to get uh, the, the task on the sidelines, undying. And I think Matumba Man, he needs to get himself out of here. Where's the shackles? They got it on Matumba Man, they got to go up the high ground now to try and get him. There goes the, uh, the heal, purification, and uh, Matumba Man going down. Big kill there. And it's going to be Shadow Shaman that gets the nearly 800 gold bonus. Although the chase, oh, Queen of Pain. Oh, getting chased by her own illusion. The right clicks come in. Ah, she gets it. Oh, oh she goes nice. down. <laughs> oh, no. And now Doxy is just going to fight up against the Shadow Shaman. He's, actually, they're both taking damage here at yes, the moment. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, they are. The saving grace is honestly Baby Knight. And he made that fight by baiting them into, into a snowball. Um... And then obviously also the Shadow Shaman with the very surprising Blink Dagger. I didn't see that one coming. I didn't really pay attention to him, but suddenly he has a Blink Dagger and another 2k gold to spare. Um, enabling them to kill the, the Matumba men, which, who, who, by the way, probably is considering an, a Lincoln at this point after all. Kefka, can they really? Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, that was a good, good. Oh, the roll comes through. Do they have any stuns? Oh, they got enough damage. Nice try. Nice try. Yeah. Uh, Copter finished his S and Y, and I guess it's gonna be a BKB now. Maybe the best uh, item he can get, so he doesn't get locked down. The repel straight away on the gyrocopter. They snowball though. Omni might might pay with his life here. Punched up into the air, in comes Kuroki in the ultimate form, but no, once again, no stuns. Oh, really are locking down, lock, lacking lockdown at some yeah, points in this game. especially since two of the heroes that have the lockdown on. Oh, oh Queen of Pain of which, they have Baby Knight. Yeah, are they going to continue? Are they going to go on this? No Baby Knight wants to, wants to go back. Uh, good ward coming out from Liquid, by the way. They saw these, uh, this rotation coming out, so... In general, they have really good wards. They just know as soon as LC is stepping outside of their base, basically. And 
gem, pick gem now for undying. Yeah. yeah. I like this a lot. If you're in a if you're in a lead, you should always consider getting a gem just to make sure that you stay ahead. Uh, yeah, gem is a really good item to just con contain the enemy. They already also, have... Yeah, sure, go ahead. I was gonna say, I, I also agree, I think it's really good if you're behind sometimes. Because yeah. you can try and get your get the map control back. But yeah. So it works both ways. Yeah, that's true. I do like it more when you're ahead, mostly because I mean if you deny that vision, that little vision that they already have, it's very detrimental. Whereas if you're My if you're behind, goodness. I think the risk of losing the gem is very high and um it's all always difficult to really get to those places to deward properly. Um that said it's not like Liquid has the most advanced wards right now. Or like the most next level ward placements. Blink Dagger on Matumba Man, by the way. Oh, he's had it for quite some time, but... Just wanted to point out that he keeps playing this glass cannon kind of build. Yeah. Opening on his quick reactions. The thing is, though, there's so much that can actually disable the blink. The cauldron has a huge range, then this black cannon, shadow strike, obviously. These three radiant heroes in the top lane, they want to jump on someone, but. Blue was very, very angrily pinging Fata. He was like, hey guys, <laughs> there's a razor. Kill him, kill him. They're gonna be able to find him is the question. The blink forward, the force stuff, they hex him! Now the cooldown, the wards as well go down. They do the BKB comes off enough time on Razor, and the backup coming in, Dark it. Good wall and the back. He also got the Guardian Greaves off. Fatter still alive, still alive through all of this. So we'll pick him up, bring him towards these heroes. Good GA, so the physical damage is negated for now. But that's Fatter still alive! How is he still alive? He kills off eventually going down, but does kill off the Jarrah before that happens. Shadow Shaman falling as well. Where is this Queen of Pain? Running back towards her base as the rest of her team goes crumbling to the floor. Uh, they stopped focusing him, and I'm pretty sure that the Rasa didn't micro his wards, because I'm fairly certain he, nobody hit him Yeah. Uh, at some point. Oh, he was alive for so long. Yeah. The, the, the snowball was actually really good. Because it allowed the toss, uh, the Undying to get a really, really good soul rip with a bunch of creeps nearby. It was really, it was really well played. And Liquid. Radiance top tower is under I don't know, man. They're so strong right now. I can only think of a few scenarios where LC can actually win a team fight, and a bunch of them require more items. I feel. Yeah, or and a bit more time. Liquid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A 12k net worth ahead. And the thing is. They even got the jump first, but because Liquid had the ward up top, which, by the way, I just saw, I just said they don't have, uh, don't have any next level wards, but this was actually next level, because they basically anticipated this gang coming in. Uh, they had perfect vision over the enemy. Really, what wards can do. The Rosh Roshan should be up with well, the minimum respawn timer should be now. We'll find out how long it's going to be. 39 seconds, so it's going to be a short one. Well, both teams have made note. Okay, uh, Ether Lens for Darks here? Mm -hmm. I guess. Gives, gives longer, you longer, yeah. longer vacuum, which is really yeah. nice. Yeah. First like, time I've seen this, but yeah. Does he really need it though with the Blink Dagger? Feels a little strange to me. I mean, but... it, it just increases the range of initiation, right? Uh, the fact that you can like blink from further away and then still get a well placed vacuum. So in that regard, I guess it's okay. But yeah, I agree. I don't think I don't necessarily think it's uh, necessary to have it in this game. I could think of a few items like Shiva's guard, for example, that would have been better. But you know, I guess it. I guess it's a bit of personal preference. Oh, Queen of Pain. She just blinked in, and they know it as well. BKB, she's got that off cooldown. The blink off in one second. Nah, the right clicks. Deny we are going to see him. Tusk. Deny him. Is he going to go him. down? No, he's oh, got. No. He's, he's fine. I still want him. I still want him to deny him though. But yeah, maybe not playing way too aggressive there. I think, especially since they have zero vision there. If if you're if you're in a, in a position like that, you cannot you cannot blink uphill into zero oh, vision. Oh no! Vacuum catching out two heroes. And we're going to see Omni Knight, he's going to commit his life to try and save Jalopy. And he does, but... 
The GA ult down for a very long time, 150 seconds. Nice. Ooh, this is not a good position for LC. They cannot give away these kills if they want to stay in this game. They need, especially the Queen of Pain cannot afford to die right now. She's doing really well in actually keeping up in terms of net worth. If you look at it, she's only 4k behind Fata, which is quite impressive considering Fata has basically been farming all game non-stop, right? Yeah. She's got the AC. Yes, oh. Oh, the blink bullet from Matumba man. He's gonna kill off the shaman straight away. Now the punch up into the air, Kefka. He's dead as well, oh. and they have no buybacks. This is why you go glass cannon, you can just do this stuff and nobody can punish it. Uh, this, is, this is gonna be so hard. It's gonna be a cooldown just to try and zone them away. The ping goes on Jalopy, he's gonna punch the fence to the air. Oh, it's on cooldown for six more seconds. Solar crest on him, the snowball. Look, they're going after the T4s, but doesn't matter, he's dead. Only the Queen of Pain alive. There is a buyback from the gyrocopter if he wants to. I don't think he wants to, he'll um, probably just die again. If anything, they should try to fight 5v5. But gonna lose the whole base before that happens. Probably, yeah. Actually, I think no. they can fight the last last set of wrecks. They, they do still have, have the glyph. Yeah. Oh, okay, there's the buyback. buyback. Okay. Oh no, Baby Knight, he's got to be careful, he has the BKB, and he's going to need to blink away very quickly. But Matumba Man, he's in some trouble here, taking off damage from the Gyrocopter. It's going to be the Snowball to save him for now. What's going to happen? The punch up into the air, Matumba Man still alive for now. One more right click, he's actually going to go down to the tower. Going back inside the base, the vacuum brings back two heroes, and now the shackles onto the darks here. Maybe this is the overextension that the LC were hoping for. Matumba, mind control, mind control. Got to finish him off. There we go. Oh, Fata! Fata! Is he gonna get- no! Uh, he goes down as well. This Three is cores some... of liquid dead. Some impressive 3-2-2 here. Wow. Uh, <laughs> they, not, not only did they not get the tower, they gave away, I believe, two streaks? Nah, it was, ah, okay, not a single streak, never mind. But Fata also oh, just see. uses BKB, which is actually quite, quite important, so yeah. This uh, was some mad overextension. I'm not convinced it's game changing though. But it's not. It's not another a silly couple game of those no. maybe. And so actually, Tusk has a defusal blade now, obviously to uh, count counter that Omni Knight, purge off those elves or guardian angels. And actually, Queen of Bain jumping forward onto the Tusk again, try and lock him down as quickly as possible. No roar for the. Uh, on Beastmaster, but this is going to be a tombstone that's not really going to be effective at this point in the game. Queer, uh, Jurax, he is eventually going to go down there. Doesn't get a killing spree actually. Now the roar's up, undying in some trouble. BKB from Queen of Pain, not going to get affected by the vacuum or the iron shell. The right click's coming in, Kuroki. He's a pretty, pretty tanky guy and now. Without the DKB, I'm going to see Baby Knight just TP himself away. Gets stunned up though, punched into the air, and in comes Matumba Man, slight of fist. It's going to be Queen of Pain going down, and Omni Knight as well. Heals himself. I don't think there's anything he can do. He's just going to try and delay the inevitable with the crits. Oh, my Too much for him to chasing. handle. He has a blink in two seconds. Whoa, the axes! I'm going to cancel it. He gets forward, back him up in three seconds, plus the snowball. Should be enough to stun him down. Tusk gets that one. And this is LC getting overextending themselves again. After they got the Tusk, they should have just disengaged, but they wanted the Undying as well. And Yeah, as you, as you correctly pointed out, Undying is incredibly tanky, actually. Especially when my control is there with the with the guardian grease. So yeah, he's got he's got a missed chance with the solo crest as well. Yeah, which was uh, must have played a huge part. So, so second second Roshan gonna go down. LC kind of I'm not gonna say throwing away the game there, but it was they had they had a good chance at at least making a bit of a comeback, but they kind of gave that away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, game's not over yet. It's not over until the Ancient falls. Oh yeah, for sure. Or someone calls GG. Either. And again, Liquid can overextend. I mean, they have a good lineup to dive. They have Surge, they have Snowball, they have Slide of Fist. They can dive all day long if they want to. Butterfly completed for Gyro. Yeah, he has no buyback anyway. Might as well go all out. Should've gone for the rape here. Uh, that would've been suicide. <laughs> 
But at least he gets, uh, he's gonna evade some of the physical damage coming in from Razor and the Ember Spirit. Tombstone put down a blink forward by Bontomba Man. Trying to do what he can, the vacuum, the raw now onto the Darkstair over on the right hand side. We do see Jalopy punched up into the air. Obviously, he has no BK between now, flying out the. Right, clicking out those uh, flat cannons for now. With well, several more, do get put down by the T3 in the bottom lane. But that's Matum, uh, Matum, uh, actually not Matum Ban, that's the Gyrocopter going down. Three buybacks from LC now, and Kefka, he's gonna get snowboard on and goes down to punch it to the air. And that's gonna be Undying getting two kills, Queen of Pain dead now. No bike back on her, there is a buyback on Beastmaster, but the GG comes out. Maybe like calling it for his team. So the first game of this uh, two game series, going the way of Liquid. Yeah, very, very solid performance from them. I'm not too convinced by the LC draft, and I believe their execution was also a bit lackluster. I think they... I don't know, I feel like... I can see why they picked up the Omni, but Omni and Shadow Shaman is probably too passive. And they couldn't really do anything against the against the Ember Spirit early on, because they were A, too squishy, and... Well, pretty much because they... Yeah, they're too squishy, and they can't really deal any damage towards him. So... Yeah. I think they basically gave him free free reign.